next is a letter to trustees of trust funds. Uh, Mr. Welch. Mr. Chairman, you had asked. Uh, good question. Um, the question is, do you want to send a letter to the trustees of the trust funds dealing with the situation uh, with Mackinson and Sons? I think that's that's the pregnant question. Did you want to talk? Um, sure. Mark? Yes. Last, last Monday night's meeting, the board uh, read aloud and made comment on the letter from the New Hampshire Attorney General's office to actually dear trustees, meaning all 29 towns worth of trustees that are invested in Mackinson and Company, addressing the SEC sanctions order. That letter of the Attorney General's office uh, indicated that trustees of the trust funds have a fiduciary duty to do a number of things with regard to their respective trusts in regard to this situation and uh, indicated that if trustees did not carry out their fiduciary duties, the Attorney General's office could take action against those trustees. Uh, what we have seen in response to this letter of November 20 is uh, not very much action on the part of our trustees. It's been indicated uh, in the press uh, that the trustees intend to meet to consider a continued relationship with Mackinson and Company at their regular quarterly meeting on January 19th. That will have meant two months elapsed since this letter from the Attorney General's office. Uh, if the board feels that uh, that uh, awaiting that long to do something about it is troubling, uh, and if the board feels that the trustees are required under this letter to do a lot more than just explore whether they should have a continuing relationship with Mackinson, such as the five or six action items that are in this letter, then um, my recommendation to the board is that a letter go from this board to the trustees, reminding them of what is set forth in this letter from the Attorney General's office, uh, requesting immediate public uh, response to that, and um, reminding the trustees that failing that type of action, the Attorney General's office could take action against the trustees, much as they did five years ago when there was a hiring of Mackinson and Company uh, without the necessary uh, process. Would you like to speak first, uh, Mr. Bean? Yeah, it's a very well uh, written letter. Yep. It uh, uh, articulates uh, and amplifies the New Hampshire Division of Charitable Trust letter that was sent to uh, the trustees that uh, nobody knew about, that we didn't have a copy of. Uh, it's a very serious issue. We heard public comment tonight. There's rampant uh, concern and discord in the community uh, about this issue. And uh, uh, not unlike the public speaker this evening, uh, in, in accordance with this letter and prior comments, uh, this needs to be kept on the front burner and additional action is required. Uh, and I would also recommend that that letter be put on the town website and, and prepared to make that motion later on this evening. Thank you, Esquire, for your great work. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Bridal. I could not agree more with Mr. Bean. I think uh, we need to keep this moving forward. Um, you know, we, we expect from our public and, uh, officials that they protect our, our, uh, our rights and our, our investments, and uh, I think we need to move forward and make sure that they do that in a timely fashion. Mrs. Wolsey. Um, in reviewing the um, proposed letter, uh, I had a couple of uh, thoughts. Uh, under the first paragraph at the bottom, it says, to date you have apparently done nothing to initiate this inquiry. Uh, I assume that's nothing that we are aware of. On the uh, bullet two, it says, to date you have not sought to consult with town council, whereas on page three it says you have also consulted with town council before and may do so again. My problem here is that the trustees of the trust funds are independent elected officials. I understand that they have a fiduciary responsibility to the community. They have already received a letter from Mr. Donovan, and we have copies, a copy appended here. Uh, and I don't know, um, 
I don't know whether the time frame here is so desperate. Certainly, um, Attorney Gerald is, is our counsel. He's counsel for this board. I would not expect him to represent the trustees. I would expect him to free funds if necessary for the trustees to hire appropriate outside counsel. Is that fair? That's, that's a possibility. Okay, I mean, you would not, in your capacity as attorney and counsel for this board, you would not also, I would think, undertake to represent the trustees of the trust funds who are a separate elected entity? Um, I, as the second page indicates, I have assisted them in the past, uh, in particular last year when Mackinson and Company had uh, charged the real estate trust fund for right. Uh, fees and as regard to other accounts, right. uh, which they had no authority to do, I assisted the trustees in getting those accounts made whole. Right. Uh, as early as this fall, I was asked a question about them with regard to whether or not uh, they were making appropriate use of emails in connection mm -hmm. with their meetings, right. communicating by in email in between meetings. Mm -hmm. I gave them counsel in that regard. Right. Uh, the Attorney General's office recommended that. Uh, they consult with town council. Right. If, if they felt that there was some sort of conflict, I would uh, be happy to assist them in finding outside That's counsel. That's what I was pretty much. If they uh, felt that way, okay. obviously they should be on. The, I think they should be on the same page as this board in following up on what the attorney general's office tells them to do. Shouldn't they be on the same page as the attorney general when he told right. them they should consult with you? I believe so. So okay, let's right. leave it at that. And I oh any it, other and it just would seem to me that it would be the ball is in the trustees' court now, I would think after the lawyer. Attorney General, General recommended they should consult right. with Mr. Gerald, and that's enough. Right. Uh Mr. Waddell. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um you know, this is a really touchy subject, and I agree with, with Selectman Bean, and I agree with Selectman Wolseley, uh, that they are an independently elected board, and that they, we, you know, they, they do operate separately. Mm -hmm. They are in charge of the trust fund, which is absolutely, and the investment of the trust fund. But then it becomes a little discerning when the Attorney General is sending a letter, the Director of the Charitable Trust Fund is sending a letter saying that there's a problem here with Mackinson and a problem that should be looked into and it's not being looked into on a timely fashion. When we met with them, as I recall, it was said that Mackinson had no uh, <coughs> more position with the company anymore, that he was getting maybe paid but he had no position. And then in the, one of these letters here it says that he can be on the board of directors. Well, is he on the board of directors or isn't he? Right. In 2010, there was a big question mark about Mackinson and Company. Now, five years later, there's a larger question mark. I just cannot, for the life of me, understand why they just don't switch to a different company. I mean, I think, I think it's a very easy solution, and I don't understand what the uh, reason is to stay with this company. I mean, it was said, well, they don't charge us. You know, they give us a good rate. Well, big deal. You know, it was said tonight by Victor, you know, that, <laughs> come on, you can get a rate out of places, and is that, is that the most important thing? It is a fact uh, determined by the SEC that Mackinson was fraud, it was found a fraud, the company was found that committed fraud, or they settled for that, all right, that, um, that he was the compliance officer, I believe, at the time. It's just that there are so many questions and the questions don't, and the questions are not just coming from the Board of Selectmen or the voters in Hampton, they're coming from the Attorney General's office and from the, uh, the Charitable Fund. I, you know, I hate to sign a letter like this, but I would sign it. Any more comments? <clears throat> Mr. Bean? Uh, I would move that uh, the letter drafted by Town Council dated December 14, 2015 to Mr. Silberdick as chair and other members from the Board of Selectmen, pages 1, 2, and 3 be sent to the Board of Trustees and posted on the town website. I'll second that. All those in favor? 
and against? I'm going to oppose. I, I think that the re they should be uh, responding to the uh, letter from Mr. Donovan. Okay, we have four and one against. Thank you. <clears throat>